So what was a bit difficult for me is that these chapters and this chapter especially, it doesn't really explain any of the methods. It just shows the code, how to use them. And I was not familiar with, with the methods as well. So I, I tried to have some understanding about them. Uh, yeah, so first of all, what's, what's the motivation? The motivation is, uh, well, basically to know whether we should trust our models, I guess, in, in, in one sentence. So you can build trust if you can explain why it does what it does. And it's relevant for prediction and inferential analysis and the, the, and the descriptive descriptive analysis as well. And also in, I guess, in some industries, it's like mandatory. So it's, 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 it's also regulated uh, in, in, in some cases that you cannot have like a completely black box model. Uh, yeah, I think there was one example which I uh, really liked, but that, uh, there was an example where they trained uh, uh, a neural network to identify whether an animal in an image is a dog or a wolf. And, and it was a really good prediction. So they had very, very good accuracy, but later it turned out that it had very poor results on some new images. And the reason was, and with, with this, uh, uh, I think with the line method, they identified that the prediction, so like, like identifying which image parts are the most important for, for the prediction, they identified that uh, the wolves were always photographed in a snowy weather, so in like a snowy forest. And the dogs were not with snow. So it, it actually, the algorithm learned the snow and not the, not the animal. So obviously if you photographed a wolf, uh, Yeah, it's like, I think a typical, uh, yeah, sorry. So I, I don't really have, yeah, it's, it's something like that. Uh, so, so with this uh, method, you can see that actually it's not part of the animal, but it's just the background. So I guess this is one like, uh, a good example of, of why why this is important really to to understand these these algorithms. Uh, is this is this clear? Or... Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. So so that's the motivation and. Uh, uh, yeah, actually what I read through was these, uh, like this, this, this introductory tutorial, which has like a really short explanation of, of all these different methods. So, so I like that in the Deluxe website. And so in this chapter, we have uh, two types of, of, of uh, explanations local and global explanations. Local explanations always uh, focus on a single data point and try to understand what contributed to the prediction for that data point. And on the other hand, they call global explanations, the explanations which are about uh, the, whole, the whole model and not, not just a single prediction. Uh, so they they have like 
different methods to, to analyze a model. And, and actually this chapter focuses on this uh, second tier. So about which variables are important for a prediction or for the, for the whole model. And, and a bit about uh, oh yeah, so what variables are important and if, if you change a variable, then how will it change the prediction? And we already had like basic metrics and also uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's the difference between the top and the lowest level. Does the model fit well in general? Uh, Just a bit more uh, in uh, explaining what is doing, yeah. what is happening inside this two side of the explanations. Yeah, so and basically what... in the in the local you 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 identify one. Um, you look at a local explanation and the global you look at all the local explanation within the model so it's a global look to see what are the local predictors that most influence the result of the model yeah Uh, yes, so I think the packages used, yeah, they reference two books, which one of them is not, not really long, so like you can read quite quickly a single chapter. It looks, looks interesting. I just try to like skim through it. And another thing. Yes, yeah, so they mentioned the Delex package. Actually, the Delex trial package has a converter for, for tidy models. So as far as I understand, like tidy models purpose is already to provide a unified interface, but there are still many other modeling tools that this, this, this Delex package would like to support. So they like have another layer on top of, so they have these explainers where, so like, so like MLR is another framework similar to tidy models whose aim is to, to provide a unified interface for a lot of different uh, modeling packages. So these explainers, like in my understanding, they convert to a, to a unified format, which then the different DLX functions can, can work with. Uh, yeah, so let's see some code. Uh, oh, I didn't share my screen correctly. Let me share it again. Okay. Yes, so here, yes, so in this, uh, this whole chunk is about just preparing uh, for this chapter. So it's the usual data split recipe and we have two simple models. One is a linear model and another one is a random forest model. And so we will work with that. And uh, so we need the Dell extra package for the explain tidy models function. So as far as I understand, where we can check. So yes, yeah, so the, this is like, the model and the data in a specific format which the Deluxe package can 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 process. Uh, 
so it's 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 it didn't do anything related to to explainability yet just just converting it to a unified format mm. Yes, yeah, so the first first function is uh, seeing, so it's just selecting a single uh, apartment and seeing the variable importance for that. And not ordered so what does this predict parts do uh, I confused a bit So I think it's just see what is the what is the effect of the of that variable compared to the like the the average prediction or something like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, Yes, uh, if you see, um, I think it was uh, a little above, there was a graph uh, that says that you um, could see um, an obulo. Then, then, then it became a little bit more clear because you see um, in the graph that Here, you there, um, you see that there are some variables and some predictors which are more impacting than the others. So he actually uh, trying to see what is the impact of oh, for uh, some of these variables for specified uh, values. And, and this is the... Um, basically, if you want to see if that model predicts well for using that predictor for some specified values more than other, for example. Uh. Yeah. So it says that, okay, start with the average prediction and then see that if you fix one variable's value, then how will the average prediction change? And based on that, you can say that the variable contributed like this, this effect. What's confusing a bit to me, so it, this seem to, yeah, so this depends on this depends on the training data, right? So it, it depends on, or it depends on the test data or the training data, this, this all data where you start. This, this uh, should be still the, the, I don't know, I don't, should you use the training data uh, until you have decided that the model is fine and then you test it to, you can test it on the test data or to, to new data. Uh, so I think it's the... Uh, 
Yeah, it's just there are many different resources, and I don't know where where I read about which. Uh, but one thing that 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 they mentioned that it's uh, it's not optimal about this method is that it depends on the order in which you take the variables into account, mm -hmm. and it also assumes an additive model. And well, you wouldn't really be able to do this for like. A, an image classification algorithm mm -hmm. or something like that. So it's like for tabular data and probably for for additive models. So like the improvement on this, which I guess you should like all, like almost always use instead of this, is this uh, Shapley method where you average these uh, these variable uh, importances across different orderings of the variables. So, Yeah, well, we should probably should have understood better. Yeah, so one thing is that the, in theory, this Shapley method is about looking at all the permutations of the variables. So like all, all the possible orderings and calculate this uh, like simple breakdown method and then average it out. But it's really impractical because there are like a lot of different permutations. So it's it grows really quickly. So I guess here you can just say that they take 20 random different orderings of the variables and use that and it still takes some time. But this default plot method, so in the book they created a custom plot. But actually, the default plot method from the Delex package looks quite nice. Uh, I'm just I'm just not sure which. So, what is the exact method that they use, and how it and how does it work for different types of models? Uh, maybe you can continue with the hard part. Okay, uh, let's let's see. see. Let's see what, what we can. Let's see what uh, what we understand. Okay, so share the screen. Okay. Um, in the second part of the, the chapter, uh, we look at global explanations. And uh, the, um, the, the book mentions two, in particular, two functions model parts and model profile, which are the, the, the let's say, the most, uh, the, the, the most important function, the structure of this. this um, uh, global explanation. I've been looking to this function to understand a bit how they they work. Obviously, they for they um, as you said from the Daleks package. And um, the reason for for this is, uh, as I've said, uh, uh, the global explanation provides information that are aggregated over the entire data set. Uh, and to obtain this aggregated information, you can use the local explanations 
in a way that uh, a single observation can explain what what mm, if if this single observation is very uh, important within the other predictors um, the single observation of a uh, of the most important predictor um, can give you uh, an overview of the explanation of the model to understand if the model is doing well, basically. And uh, the model part function, what does is set a level, uh, set the level variable importance based on the change in the loss function after permutations. You said permutations, no? you know, the, the, it's important the order, so you can actually ask for permutation of all the, and there's many permutations. Uh, with the model part, you select a part, uh, and uh, this is based on the loss function. And the loss function, uh, here is a, the example that the book um, mentioned um, about the explainer of the linear model. He uses a loss function, which is the loss root mean square. And this is the, um, the RMC for the regression model, models. So in this case, we as we uh, we have this type of uh, uh, model, we uh, we ask for for this type of loss function, and the the loss function that can be used in the uh, model part function are two type of metrics that can be used with the function. Uh, one is the cross entropy for multi-label classification and uh, this RMC for regression. So we know, we have some knowledge about the uh, error, the um, root mean square error. Um, about the gross entropy, uh, as not been mentioned here, uh, so it will be very interesting to, to to understand a bit more about this because it's related to the probability uh, in terms of uh, classifications of the model. So the increased uh, uncertainty around the probability, uh, the, the search probabilities. So, um, and then uh, the function uh, model part also um, um, takes as an um, argument the explainer and for this reason what it, what it actually does is uh, taking a part of the model uh, selecting the um, a sp a specified metric then I went to the um, um, the ggplot uh, function for uh, making the plot, so the custom plot, mm -hmm. um, just to see, um, to have a bit more information. And what I found interesting was uh, the use of this function, which is uh, attribute. And um, I don't know if you know about that, but uh, in the function for making the plot, um, has been uh, uh, um, used this attribution function for uh, selecting a part of the of the object, which is in our case the model that we want to uh, to plot. So, and here I'll put an example. Uh, if you have this vector. You can use attribute and which as a, um, uh, as a um, second argument with, for example, the dimension. And uh, this vector will be transformed in a matrix of two rows and five columns. 
So basically, uh, attach the attribute to uh, some data, some vector, etc. In, in our case, um, has been selected the loss name. And the loss name I've uh, translated here, uh, like I've called object our uh, VIP linear model, and then apply the attribute with uh, which equals to loss name, and the result is this. So the metric, it has extrapolated the metrics of the... Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is the, the things that you find here. So this is why you, you have this root man square error. Uh, then uh, uh, the, the plot, uh, um, it's very interesting, this function. Uh, makes a uh, box, uh, John box plot and a vertical line and as you can see the vertical line is this and uh, it is the um, um, the drop loss the, there is something that is not clear to me but um, the x intercept has been set as the drop loss and this drop loss as you have said before is the mean of all the drop loss uh, values found in the explainer model, model explainer. So this vertical line is the, the is the mean value. Okay, so the, the most um, um, the value that we found for for this metric. Um, most probably found between these two values, between the 6 and 9%. Then the book mentioned that the farthest variables from the, this line, uh, the farthest predictor from this line, uh, in both models, the linear model and the random forest, are the most important ones because uh, uh, they are the most influencing ones, so they, they are the most uh, deviating from the mean. And uh, in our case, uh, are the, the living area, ground living area and year built for uh, the linear model. And um, uh, yeah. At four, yeah, it's, it's not ordered on the left, so actually um, it's neighborhood for the linear yes, model. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, thanks. So it's living area and neighborhood for, for the linear model and living area and year built for the random forest, exactly. And uh, what else I wanted to say that um, this is defined as a global explanation. Uh, sorry, so do you know that there's a default for how many permutations it checks? Or, so I guess so, like you calculate this importance based on that they permute a single variable and see the effect on the loss function. But uh, how many times do they do that? No, um, because um, this is uh, basically um, what, what is doing this plot is applying the model part explainer, the model parts function. So the result of the model part function um, to um, and ex extrapolating the dropout loss because I show you uh, the R code. Uh, there's an N argument for this model parts, which is set to one hundred. Ah, okay. And this is the, uh, for example, the VIP model. What, uh, how is it, uh, how is made? And uh, there is a full model and a baseline, and then all the predictors in the center. So what the uh, the function, the plot function does uh, is to uh, unselect the baseline and um, 
select just the, the, the full model and then the variables. So you can see this thing um, here. And as you see, there is the mean dropout loss and and um, yeah my question was that this mean is calculated from how many samples but but i saw that there's an and n equals 100 argument to the model parts function so to the model part function yeah okay yeah, yeah. but we it don't is. see it here it's 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 already calculated i guess yeah but somehow they make the box plot so they need the variance as well or the individual data yes. points. Yes, okay, these are, these are the, uh, the sample as a, uh, at, um, as a default. But uh, um, if, you, if you want, you can, uh, in, in this case, as they, they are not being set. set. You, we set it later when we, we apply the local explanation to a global explanation. So then we take one predictor, which is our, our local, and then replicate it 500 times to see what is happening. But in this, uh, here there is a, like the number of samples as a default with this, um, this way. But in, uh, in this uh, uh, application of the model part function, we haven't set any a number of re replications. Uh, we will we see later, for example, the next one, uh, because it's saying uh, that he's trying to build a global explanation from a local explanation. Okay, and this can be done uh, in few steps. As, as you say, uh, there is an additive explanation from Shapley. Uh, so you can uh, obtain a global explanation from a local mm -hmm. model explanation. Then uh, you can permutate features. Uh, and so the global model explanation for a data set as a whole. And then a third way is called partial dependence profiles, which is, this is very nice and should be, uh, so it should be given more thoughts uh, on it to, to understand it better. And this is to build a global model explanation up by aggregating local model explanations. So the first one is just for a single observation, re repeated a certain number of time, and you try to give an explanation, a global explanation. The second one is permutating features, and the third one is uh, uh, when you aggregate uh, several local model explanations. And this is a tree. So this is the second function of the, the, the second part of the, the chapter, it's model profile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in model profile, you can use, uh, um, it's different from the other ones because the, that's model part. Okay, this is model profile. So model profile basically um, gives an explanation of the dependency inside the model. And uh, there are um, the resources that you mentioned, the, the two books, which gives you more information about uh, um, this function. And what I've done is I've taken an example for, for seeing this, this, uh, this function and uh, as you can see, uh, there is a, a, the Titanic uh, data set. Mm -hmm. And I have taken this, this thing here, model profile. Uh, you find this uh, uh, in the archivist uh, package 
uh, and it's all in the book uh, explanatory um, um, models that okay. we have seen uh, that you have mentioned before no this one here sure. the explanatory model analysis so you can see that if I use this uh, Titanic, and this is the, the data set, I have gender, age, class, uh, different information about the people that was on the Titanic. Uh, you can download it directly the random forest model, which is this, and it uses this formula. They survived as an outcome, and uh, these other uh, variables as a predictors, uh, class, gender, age, fair. Mm -hmm. uh, then he um, used this modification of the, the data set. It's a bit tied and wrangled uh, with some imputations variable. So having uh, this data, you can uh, ask uh, Dalex uh, with the explain function to explain you the model. And applying this thing with verbose true, you see that the explain function has a model, a data, which is, is the Titanic data, a little modified set of for being used, mm -hmm. and, and the predict the, the outcome. Yep. Then with verbose true, you can see what is happening with the explain function. Um, and you have all the explanation here. The, the predicted values, the residual functions, uh, and the different things. And then when you have this, uh, these are the same things that we have uh, with the AMS data in the book, no? Yes. And here, with the Titanic data, we apply model profile to obtain the partial dependent in profile random forest um, variable. OK. And what uh, model profile does is uh, uh, taking the explainer of the model, not, not the, sim the, the random foreign forest explainer, and then selecting a variable, a predictor. So in this case, uh, I use it, uh, it uses um, age, which is the just a numeric variable, uh, simple uh, age numeric uh, mm. variable. Um, and then you can use the plot function to see what is happening. And partial dependency shows that this um, uh, created uh, random forest model with local explanation age, you see that um, there is some average prediction around this. Um, so basically, children have a higher probability. Exactly. Then, yeah. then, uh, then the other. So this is a, um, an application of the model profile function. Uh, and uh, do you know that? Does it use the? The data points from the data set that you provided, or does it generate new data points to check? So, so, so if you have a model, then you can generate predictions for for any for any new imaginary data. So, it um, it depends if you ask for n equals to five hundred. I show you what I mean. Um, for example, um, what is it? So this is the um, AMES data, okay? 
and um, I don't know if it's clear to see from here. Okay, so basically, what the function does is ceteric paribus, and this means comparing the values of the variables. Okay, uh, the only thing is um, you can find more information about this because there is also a package called Cedris Paribus. Mm -hmm. um, but also in the explanatory model uh, book you find uh, more information because, because it's mentioned there. Basically, when you specify um, when you specify some information in the um, uh, model, when you specify some information in the model profile, such n equals to 500, what it does is making replications. So it, it, it is not that it's creating new data, it's like it's creating new data, but it's just assembling the data that you have provided with different combinations. And it does for 500 times, for example. Uh, and, if, and the graph that you will see is, that the, is simply the average of those. Exactly. Samples. Exactly. But, uh, yes, it, um, that is the uh, where is it? This geom line, which is obtained um, as the as the average. Because um, if you do not do, if you don't put n, for example, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're not asking for 500 replications. You have some different result. Okay. For example, here, here I've um, replicated the same thing, but uh, uh, modifying the AMES uh, uh, data. Of course. And um, this is because uh, the AMES data uh, basically, there is a bug, uh, and this data, as this is, a, it's not just a numbers, but uh, years. Um, years are considered uh, um, just as numbers. So, with the AMS data, they, uh, I found some uh, tricky result. So I have uh, I had to find a workaround and to have a view of the thing, I've modified this, modified this AMS data since the beginning before splitting and everything. I, I could have modified just the training set, but not the VIP model it, because that, that would be different. Um, to obtain, so the, the, the function worked to obtain this result, which is quite different from the book. Okay, and this is obtained um, putting this ascetic, so grouping the thing by label, and the label is the model. I'll show you, maybe it will be clear. clearer. Um, isn't so, it like uh, different samplings and the uh, blue line is the average and the others are the individual samples? Exactly. If you see, the, this um, uh, result, which is the result from, from this application, this function application, okay, this is done without applying uh, asking for any n and uh, modifying the emis data this way um, i have obtained this this plot 
But to obtain this, I had to ascetic, put the ascetic and group it by label. If I go to the example, I did it before, the application of the model profile here, and see what is it, the partial dependency profile for this uh, case study, which is, this was Titanic, no? Mm -hmm. You see that the data set that came out um, has this uh, label variable, and this label variable is the model. In this yeah, case, I guess otherwise the plot doesn't know what to connect, so it just has a it it, it has a bunch of data points. Exactly. Okay. So exactly. So um, he has finally highlighted this line, which is not uh, the one from the book again, and you see that there is even a, a different start. So uh, what was um, came out interesting to me is that uh, the values here, so the predictions, the outcomes, are slightly, slightly different. The result are slightly, slightly different if I modify the data set, if I do uh, pre-processing. Uh, the, the outcome uh, globally is the same. So mm -hmm. the tendency tend to be like growing on, okay, like um, linearly growing. Mm -hmm. But um, if you adapt it, so if you do some accurate pre-processing, the um, outcome of the, predi the prediction slightly changes. And uh, if we apply n equals to 500, the things change again. As you see, we have 500 replication on top of all the others. Yeah. Uh, this is what the book did for a particular uh, class of the particular predictors. So he asked it for uh, grouping by building types. Yeah. So you could see that uh, over a certain number um, of gross living area, the, the prediction of the sales price tend to be uh, steady. And this yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so this is another application of the same thing with uh, latitude and building type, which is... Uh, and then um, this thing is again um, a facet plot. This is a facet plot, and um, you have it here. And uh, it's uh, uh, basically more or less the same thing, but uh, uh, we can see that uh, we have, um, we are actually looking uh, a living area um, and the building types. Yeah, we see that most of the most of the houses are Ben family type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is this. Then the last um, part of the chapter uh, focus on um, the the pins data set. And the bin data set, as you can see, um, 
is the one we did it last time, the, the yeah. previous chapter. So I did replicate the, the plot using the function, using explained models for classifications. Here is, is different from the other. Here there is a classification and uh, the best one was uh, the partial least square. Yeah. So the, in this way, you could see, and sorry, I wanted to, to go here. Uh, this way you can see Okay, that the, um, the beans, uh, um, the, um, the, the, the global explanation here says that the majority, so the, what, what it should be is this. And the most uh, influencing uh, predictor is the shape factor four. And why this happens? This happens because shape factor force takes consideration of the, um, the, the, the area of the bin and the two um, dimensions in proportion of the, 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 two, the, the in proportion of, of the bin's dimensions. Yeah. And this reason then is that uh, um, this is the, 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 the predictor which is most changing one. So it's more, it, it is the one that indicate uh, the highest values of uh, difference um, across the, the other predictors. And as well as the other shape factors. So basically this is the factor that deviates the most what, uh, the, the result of the outcome. Yeah. So this has to be very taken into consideration. Um, and that's it. So. Thank you. I don't know if you want to maybe talk a bit more about uh, what is for you the best way to understand if a model is good or not when you finally found uh, uh, <laughs> some result. So looking at the plot basically like this, that would be enough for you to understand if the model is good or not. Uh, no, I think what what is also important for me is to like so the first so look at individual predictions and maybe look at look at predictions where it did wrong where the model did wrong. Uh, For example, uh, these things are very really impressed to me because um, uh, if I slightly change something, like uh, I put, I, I do it because I think it, that, that it's a good thing to do. I have AMS data and decide to adapt it better to say that I want uh, all doubles all uh, numeric or just integers and this thing changes the day, ch change change the, the, even yeah, slightly I, yeah i'm i'm not sure what i take out of these these plots so i like the other plots better so okay there's a shape but it seems to be a bit like quite noisy i mean depending on the training data so Uh, 
especially with with houses, there are usually quite a lot of like average houses and and fewer on the on the on on either end of the spectrum. So it seems like difficult to assess so to to assess it on on the where where there are fewer houses in in that category. So I wouldn't trust really the trend when there's like only a few houses in the in the sample data. You can even use replications in that case and see that you have uh, like certain number of replication of same data. What what would that be? Yeah, but whatever you do, you won't have more examples of luxury housing in the training data, so you can't really increase the the amount of that. But but you but probably you have enough data to know about like the the majority of the houses. Yeah, but to be honest, this is new to me, so I I I need to gain like actual experience with it to form a real opinion. But anyway, you can see that they somehow making make makes big they, they they make sense somehow. Yeah, that's, you, that's yeah. Yeah. 